ahead, so here we are again one more time. Uh, Marsberry Farm Foods here in Lancaster, Kentucky. We're going to be breaking down the beef high court today. What we're going to do is break it down into a track of parts. Hopefully, this will be important for you and the chef or meat cutter to figure out where is my sirloin versus where is my knuckle, where is my top round. Uh, so, here we've broken it between the 12th and the 13th rib. My 13th rib is still on. Here, I've got my tail attached, and that's where we're going to start. We'll break that off. Some of this excess fat off. Um, you want to make sure when you break the tail down, you can see here where the vertebrae are, and you want to go just in front of each one, you're going to get those nice slices. If you try to cover the middle, you're hitting right into bone. So you need to find that. Your knife will generally slide right into that joint. So you just want to find those bumps. Another way is on the sides here. You find these little bumps here, you cut just south of the end away, set that off to the side. So where we're going to start, we're going to be breaking, breaking this section off here. This is our sub-round that contains our flint stick, contains our sirloin strip stick. So I'm going to start by breaking that off here. I'm going to come in and pop the top around and pull that off. This is our tri-tip roast right here, so we want to stay out of that. Everywhere on a beef, there's a natural seam. The end of those seams and out of the muscle. If I'm cutting in the meat, I want to come out and make sure I'm in the fat. And you'll know right when you're in the seam, I'm doing this popping sound. I'm pulling with my left arm, and I'm using my hand to just break that tissue down. Now I want to stay in the seam as far as I can. You can see here, that's my tender. So we can bring it down and around. on the other side, but this piece of meat here is starting to be sold as the sirloin uh, flap steak. So if I cut through too much of that, I'm going to ruin that cut. So I'm going to keep following that seam down until I come to the natural break. Now once I'm there, I'm going to make a straight line down, and that's going to be the edge on my New York strip, my new strip. So it comes with tears, break that all the way off, take a grip on it. Pull that down and off. Now what we have here is our flank steak. We have our sirloin flap steak. I'm going to make a couple preliminary cuts, just tracing out these muscles here on either side. All I want to do is create an area where I can peel this membrane off without pulling the steak. So here I'm peeling my flank steak down, make a cut, and peel it back. And again, you're going to find that natural seam. If you're too deep in here, you'll be pulling between this muscle and this muscle, which isn't going to want to come apart. The muscle wants to separate on those natural seams. So if you made your trimming original cuts right, you'll be able to just trim this plain steak out. That's ready for your meat counter, ready for sale. Next thing we're going to do, the same thing over here. We made our preliminary cut, separate our sirloin flap out. We're going to come back, we're going to get the natural seam here. Take this all the way down. Again, I'm pulling with my left hand, and I'm using my knife just to come through the membrane that still remains. So I'm going to take this down as far as I can. The rest of this is going to be trimmed out for clean ground beef. Now to finish up on our sirloin flat steak, I'm going to take this edge off. Put that side for ground. Just like you're peeling out a skirt steak, you find that membrane. Out that direction. This is ready to ship right now. If you're going to cut that in the store, you'll remove this and then sell it that way. It's a nice thing for merchandising. So now, what we're left with is our tender one here. So your strip is here. And our sirloin is right here. Our knuckle is here. And this is our flat round, our high round, and our top round. So I'm going to start by breaking out our tender one. I find this in my eighth bone. I make a straight cut right to the top of the tender one, all the way over. I'm going to trace this muscle group out. My knife is running on my bone the whole time. Not straight down, all the way to the bone. I'm going to come in through here. I'm going to my 
learning curve. And all I'm going to do is find those seams. Again, it's all about finding the natural seam. And once we fall apart, we're going to these cuts. Now all I'm going to do is pull that down. You're not going to get a cleaner pull than that on your tender one. If you're using a knife to try to get it off, you're not going to get cleaner. All you're going to do is ruin the backside of your tender one. So, for you meat cutters out there, this is your Pismo one that you're getting from your big packing houses. Uh, what we do here, Marksbury Farm, we sell extra trim. So I'm going to take that off. I'm going to come in through here, peel my strap by hand off of this one. I don't want to cut into it. Take this off. That peels down. There's another seam right here. That peels down. All of this fat, I'm just take it off my hand, grab it, pull it off. Now we have our not case ready, but this is ready to ship. It's our extra cream boneless finger one. If I was going to cut steaks, I'd take the silver skin off and go on from there. So the next thing I'm going to do is take my knee strip off. Your H bone runs like this. Here's your spine, your tail is over here. So I'll have the first big joint right here. I'm going to come in and I'm going right through the cartilage on that joint. Come out the other side. I'm going to make a straight line. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to connect these two straight out. Through that soft bone here on the bottom of my edge bone. Turn it around and connect those dots. Now I've made a nice flat cut so that I can cut a snake here. If you make a bad cut here and start pulling, you're going to pull the muscles out of your New York street and they're going to be hanging here all over this way. Break the remaining Now I have, if you cut steaks out of this, they'd be club steaks or they'd be bone in strip steaks. I'm going to bone it out for us today. Come down. Your 13th rib should be still attached. Get a better angle so you can see what I'm doing here. All I'm doing, my knife, I'm using a semi flexible bone knife. Come down the side. And I don't want to cut into the strip one here. All I'm doing is breaking this rib free so that I can get it out of my way. Again, it wants to fall apart with these natural ways. Next thing you're going to do, I like to clean this back up. And there are a series of feather ribs in here. If you are familiar with slicing uh, bone and belly, then you're going to find those feather ribs. It's the same thing. It's the soft bone that ends at the end of all of your ribs here. So what you're going to do is to just find those. By bending, by bending this tail back over, that exposes where it's holding on. I just make a little cut here. And now I'm angling my knife into those bones that remain. So that I'm, you can see here, as I'm coming down, I'm leaving as little meat as possible on those bones so that I can merchandise well out of this and I can gross the way that I want to if I'm breaking down whole meat. Again, this is how your strip steaks are going to come from your packing house. And you're going to bring this, the most important part, there's a ridge of bone down in here. You're going to bring that around, open this up. Now once you're past that ridge, make a straight cut all the way across. I'm going to flip it over. This piece of tendon here is really tough. We're going to leave that for my meat trimmers to deal with. They can turn that into ground beef, but I don't want to send that out on steaks. So now we have this broken off. See, we did a good job. We still have some membrane on here. I'm going to find my tail. I'll leave about a half inch tail on this side. If you turn around here, you can see where we broke that soft tissue on the sirloin. I'm going to leave a little longer tail there. I'm going to take this, cut that soft bone tissue out of here. And now we're ready. This is a case ready New York strip loin. Cut steaks all the way through. Uh, this is, we sell a lossless product here. You're not going to have to retrim it. Uh, that's one of the great things about how we break the beef down here at Marksbury Farm Market. And so this one is ready to go. So now what we're left with, we have our age bone here, our sirloin is here, knuckles, get it top round, wide round, bottom round flat. Here's the back side of your knuckle, here's your tricep. One of the most important cuts is how you're going to break the sirloin off. If you do this correctly, you won't have to trim your knuckle, you won't have to trim your tricep. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to find right here the seam where that joint is. I want to go into that and I'm going to cut it, I'm going to cut it open so that I know I'm in the right spot. From here, I'm going straight into that joint with my knife to the other side of the bone and I'm going to make a flat cut. Again, if you want to redo this, if you want to trim, that's fine. But here, you want to be as efficient as possible with the first cut. I'm going to go straight out so that I'm leaving a nice ball tip here. I have my tri tip and my nut bolt. Once that comes off, you can see I'm going to have a nice cut. I'm not going to re trim that. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm only using about the first quarter inch half inch of my knife. I'm all the way around the edge of it. Going up and around. Now, here, you come through, your eighth bone goes up, and then it's going to come straight back down. I'm not far enough over right now, so my knife isn't going to come through that water. It's going to come up a little more. And as soon as you're through, you won't have any more resistance. Now what I'm going to do, I'll do this. I'm going to connect these two lines. You can see here, this is an F line. Right along there. So I'm going to take this cut. And I'm coming through. Now I just hit my bone. I'm going to go south of my bone. Until I can get to the start of the soft muscle tissue on it. I'm going to connect it over to where I'm going to be. Pulling down on my left hand, opening that joint up, I'm going to come back around right here. Stay on my eighth one as much as possible. Bring this down, and all I'm doing is hanging on by this point. And we're off. Now we're left with our calling in the leg. Going in around, you can see him flip around this right now. So he's changing up right around here. That's what you can left with. So we're going to break this sirloin down right now. What I want to do is I want to just trace where the muscles are. Again, your sirloin is sitting right here. This is your tri tip and ball tip roast area. So, what we're going to do is I'm going to use the natural weight of the meat and the gravity to pull this off of the bone. So I'm going to just make a trace and cut right here. I don't want to go too deep because then I'm going to cut into where my steaks are at the bottom of my sirloin here. This is your mouse muscle. You see that in the book? That's where it's coming from. I'm going to break that down around the side until I'm free on the bone. You can see here that I've come around to where my meat is. So now I'm going to trace this out. Pull this down. And now, we are left with our sirloin and our ball tip roast area. Your ball tip, again, natural seam, right here, find where it is. You'll see your tri tip muscle running this way, cut straight down through it. Your tri tip, you bring this off, again, right on the natural seam, pull apart. Tri tip roast, ball tip, slice it. Here's your sirloin, square this up. There was some bruising on this animal here, but this is ready to be shipped out. We'll cut steaks across it this way for your sirloin. Your top butt's in the middle. Here's your two lot. Now the last thing we'll do is break this round down. We're going to come in. We're going to take the tri tip for the sirloin tip roast off first. Again, straight cuts are efficient cuts. Now I find this seam here. This white piece of fat. I'm going into the bone all the way down. I'm turning it around into the bone all the way down. I come back here. Do you want that on? I have my my knuckle or my tip. Put yourself a finger hole in here. Pull this down. That's trim. There's the tip. Last thing you need to do is break the rest of this around. Coming right through the bottom. Down and around, all of the bones, trace them down, it's not going too far, I don't want to put it in my wrist. Trace down and around. Once you're free there, pull down on your back side. And just free these up all the way down. Here this is, the less you're going to have to do later on, we're going to make it easier. Break this off. Right piece into our top round and the bottom right goose neck. 
down through here, line your seam. This is your eye of round right here. Stay out of it. Again, find your seam and stay on it. If you're in the meat, you're in the wrong spot. Bring this down until you're free here. Turn the gooseneck a little. Here's our gooseneck, high of round, flat, that's attached, that's ready to ship. We're going to clean up our top round a little bit here. Pull the shank feet off the bottom, again, stay in the seam, if you're in the meat, you're in the wrong spot. Pull this out, our top round, I'll clean this up a little bit, and that's it. So here we are with the high corner breakdown. We have our sirloin, tri-tip, tenderloin, sirloin flap, oxtail, knuckle, loin, our strip loin, the our strips, our gooseneck, and our top round ropes. I hope that's pretty informative for you and tells you a better way of how we do it.